Welcome to the Alan Handelman Show, a variety of fascinating people from the international world of rock and roll to the conversational newsmakers and authors. From the great television and motion picture talents to the country's funniest comedians. And best of all, you can call Alan and his guests toll free at 1 800 Rock Talk. You never really know what's going to be happening, but we guarantee you a show people will be talking about tomorrow. Now, here's Alan. It's good to have you here. We have Rudy Sarzo back with us, one of the most respected bassists in heavy metal. He worked with Ozzy Osbourne, Quiet Riot, White Snake, Ingve Malstein, Blue Oyster Cult, and his new band, Animetal USA. And you might remember we had him on when his book came out, Off the Rails, talking about working with Ozzy, what that was like in the 80s, and his very good friend, Randy Rhodes, why he's suspicious about the plane crash, what happened before it uh, during the Diary of a Madman tour. We have a lot to talk about. Also, Pat Buchanan on, the mafia lady and Beatle expert, Robert Rodriguez. Oh, man, this is going to be fun. Rudy Sarso is one of the most respected bassists in heavy metal. He worked with Ozzy Osbourne, Quiet Riot, White Snake, Ingve Malstein, Blue Oyster Cult, and now Animetal USA, which is already gold certified in Japan. And his recordings with all these artists have sold in excess of 30 million copies. We had him on during the uh, release of his book, Off the Rails, a great book about playing with Adi, Ozzy in the uh, 80s. And sharing the stage with the great, amazing Randy Rhodes. It is great to have you back, Rudy. It's great to be back, Alan. Looking forward to another outstanding interview. Well, I'll tell you what. It, it's just easy to say right off the bat, you got a hit here. Let's uh, just start off with the story, how this all came about, because it's something uh, special. Yeah. Yes, the, uh, the genesis of Any Metal USA. Uh, are you familiar with the uh, Japanese animation art form known as anime i was but not like i am now because i learned about the how you know it could be animation for any generation yeah terrific terrific well uh many years ago uh there was a band called animetal just a jap at the japanese version basically of what we're doing now what we do is more uh characteristic of speed metal heavy metal theirs was uh just basically rock hard rock and they came up with the concept of doing uh, anime theme songs, and uh, you know, which is where the, uh, the the basically the animation you know that they grew up with and they were fans of, and just you know making records and stuff like that, you know, with it and performing and so on. That was like 20 years ago. Now, fast forward to about a year and a half ago when our singer Mike Vissera started talking to our record company Sony Music, and Mike had played with Loudness, which is the, uh, the iconic Japanese metal band, you know, world-renowned, uh, incredible group. He was here, and he was lived in Japan for about three years. And he is a huge fan of anime, having lived in Japan and, you know, being exposed to the whole art form. And uh, so he was uh, bouncing around the idea of, uh, you know, resurrecting the whole concept of anime metal with a record company. And they decided to go ahead and uh, I got a call since uh, I've done a lot of touring in Japan, and also I am a 3D animator. I do a lot of animation, and uh, uh, I find anime to be just about the most cutting edge of all 3D animation and also 2D animation. Mm -hmm. And you know that, that that you know that's available you know out there. It's just incredible. The uh, the graphics. The storylines are always cutting edge. You know, you're only limited by your imagination when you are, you know, in either a fan or an artist with anime. So I joined. Then uh, the the, uh, the next uh, person was uh, obviously the obvious choice to call was Chris Impelateri, who is incredibly popular and successful in Japan with his own group, Impelateri, and he's just a phenomenal guitar player. You know, just awesome, great performer. So uh, when we went in to do the album, uh, we had Scott Travis from Judas Priest performing on it. That was on the first record. Uh, when it came time to tour for the first record, uh, Scott Travis was busy with Judas Priest. So uh, we recruited uh, John Daddy, who 
have been playing with uh, Testament and Slayer, and he just fit in perfectly. And uh, so that's our, you know, this is uh, Annie Metal USA today. It's Mike Vizera, Chris and Pelletary, John Deddy, and myself. And uh, so we have two albums in Japan. The first record, Annie Metal USA, and the following called W. Now, in the United States and around the world, uh, there is a special edition released through Century Media that it's available, that it's basically a compilation of both albums, you know, the, uh, the, the first one and the second one. So uh, that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's, yeah, that's great. the USA. Yeah, to talk about uh, the upcoming tour and reaction so far, I understand you played last month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our first live performance was in Japan in, at Loud Park, which is uh, the, the most prestigious and largest uh, heavy metal uh, festival in Japan. They, do, they hold that every year. I performed there with Dio like a couple of years ago. So it was, cause it was incredible to go back and play with Animal USA. Uh, we were just added on at the very last minute because our album was, uh, just, had just got released and we actually we went to number one on, you know, in, in the charts in Japan even before the album was available, just based on pre-orders, which was uh, just amazing. And the reviews, you know, because the you know, press got all the pre-release, you know, uh, uh, great audio reviews, files. Great reviews, great reviews. Yeah, yeah, the reviews are just phenomenal. And uh, so we got added, and we went on at 10.30 in the morning, and we had 15,000 people <laughs> at the venue. And it was an all-day show. You know, the last, last band went on like around 11 o'clock at night. So they knew what they were getting the, 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 themselves into, but they really wanted to, wanted to come out and support us. And what's amazing about uh, playing with Annie Metal is that even if, especially in Japan or if you're a fan of Annie Mae, even if you never heard our record, once you hear our music, since yeah. it's, you know, metal version of Annie Mae theme songs, you already embrace the band and start singing along and become part of the whole event. Yeah, it's because there's a lot of similarities, and it is it is metal. It is music that you're gonna like. It doesn't really take a, a love of anime, right? It just yeah, it, exactly, exactly, exactly. And uh, we did uh, back in June. We did a tour of Japan with another anime centric band from Japan called uh, Jam Project, which is five of the top anime theme songs performers, vocalists. And they have their own band. So we, it was called a summit because we went on, then they followed us, and then at the end, both bands played together. And it was, I, it was just incredible, an incredible evening. I mean, you know, it's rare that you have such a chance to do to have such camaraderie in the whole bill, not just for the guys in your own band, but also with the other, guy, uh, with the other band members to actually go on stage and perform. And to me, that's what music is all about. Okay, we're going to let make sure the audience gets to hear a good dose of it. The album is available. Downloads are available. Is the full CD yeah. available also in this country? Yeah, it's called the Special Edition. Yes, it is available. Actually, not only in this country, but around the world through Century Media and iTunes. Also. Gotcha. All right, we are going to be talking about. It's amazing. You some of these DVDs that came out recently, uh, featuring the bands that you were a part of, they were all at their peak, and you were with all these amazing bands. Just fantastic. You know the Ozzy yeah. thing, the White Snake, Quiet Riot. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, that, that that's a really good question, and um, I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, and you brought up the fact that they were at their peak. And, you know, those are just, you know, uh, just you know, outstanding snapshots of where music was at the time, you know, all the, because, you know, we weren't that different from other bands. For example, if you saw us with White Snake, you know, with, like, big hair, well, everybody had big hair. <laughs> right. So, like, we were not the only ones, you know. But we just happened to, like, look good wearing it, I guess, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, the... Uh, in 1990, we did uh, we did the Monsters of Rock tour, and that's where that video is from, live at Donington. Uh, we did a whole tour in uh, in Europe with uh, with Aerosmith and Poison and uh, and some other bands, and uh, it was just incredible. And that was a very special night capture. I mean, any time that because you know David being from England, of course, to him coming home and performing in front of the audience that you know first nurture him with Deep Purple and then embrace him with Whitesnake. That's always very, very close to him. So to, uh, to headline 
from Donington. You know, I mean, that that was that was that was just an incredible night, very magical. So that's on that video. Then the uh, uh, well, it's actually just a couple of, of Ozzy ones. You have the God Bless Ozzy Osbourne that that I that I did uh, some interviews for Jack Osbourne's uh, documentary on his father, uh, Ozzy, and then the uh, the Speak of the Devil that just came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, like, that's uh, like, right. You know, like that's yeah, right. Maybe uh, yeah, on the seventeenth of July. That's another uh, interesting release because you know it's basically a celebration. The way I look, you know, I looked at the video. I, have, I haven't watched the footage in 30 years, and I look at it, and I say, you know, we have to really get up on stage and really dig in deep inside to be able to carry on without Randy being there. But we knew the only way that we could do it was to celebrate. Celebrate Randy's friendship, his musical contributions, everything about him. It was the last tour that Ozzy did where the bulk of the material was from both the Diary and the Blizzard of Oz record, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm so glad that, that, that it was released because it's not just a tremendous performance by Ozzy's band and, you know, you have Brett Gillis that really saved the day by coming in and allowing us to, to finish the tour with, you know, dignity and doing justice to, to Randy's memory, right. you know. But, uh, but it's definitely a celebration of, 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 of Randy Rhodes, you know, absolutely, you know. It's, so, it, and then, and, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, continue, yeah, go ahead. Then, uh, yeah, and then, and then in addition to that, there is the Choir Riot Live at the Us Festival. Right. Was, and that's a story to itself because, you know, we were just added on like a couple of days before the Us Festival happened. So uh, we showed up with a skeleton crew because our own crew was driving our equipment to the next town, you know, and we just flew in, did the show, oh, got man. out. And yeah, we, we were the first band to go on that, that morning. So it was like, you know, our crew was, you know, our, our tour manager and one one more person that served as our crew, they were freaking out because every time they would go on, you know, on stage to set things up for us, they will come back and say, man, there's like 300,000 people out there. I say, please, you know, relax. We have to go out there and play. So don't, don't, don't get me nervous, you know. But it, again, it was one of those great, beautiful snapshots, the band at the very beginning of that climb from like you know we we were still driving ourselves in an RV when we did that show you know and then uh, then months later in November our album went to number 1 you know so that was really the beginning of that incredible journey so you know those are beautiful snapshots all right, I'll tell you what, Rudy, let's take a break. One of your big ones with White Snake, it's Rudy Sarzo. Rudy Sarzo, one of the most respected bassists in heavy metal, is with us. One of his bands, he was with him right to the end, is Dio, one of their big hits. Coming up later, Pat Buchanan and the latest from The Mob, the Mafia Lady, is joining us. And Beatle expert Robert Rodriguez. As we continue with guitar legend, bass guitarist Rudy Sarzo, his new band, Any Metal USA. This is one of the cuts. It rocks. Whether you're into anime or animetal, I mean, animetal is metal, basically. I know it's a little confusing. Hey, go back, if you would, Rudy, to Off the Rails. And after Randy Rhodes died, it was very difficult to see what was happening to Ozzy. He was kind of falling apart if there weren't people around him. So talk about that, if you will. You mean as far as us continuing after Randy uh, Yeah, perished? when, when he yeah. was at his low yeah. point, And then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, people ask me, how, how did you guys carry on? You know, it's like, you know, immediately, pretty much right after the accident, I mean, Sharon knew that there was no way Ozzy could just go back home and just sit around and, and, and you know, cancel the tour. He would have drank himself to death. You know, the only reason why we, why we continued was to keep him occupied, you know. And, and, and if we were going to keep him occupied, and if we had to get up there on stage every single night with the same set, right. with the castle, you know, with the dwarf running around and was wearing uh, the, the same clothes and, and Randy Rhodes playing the uh, the intro to Diary of a Madman every single night. That's how we opened the show. If we had to do that every single night, we had to really dig in deep down inside and, and get some spiritual strength to be able to survive that. That's well it, put. Was, it was it was it was hard, man. It was really hard to do that. Really super hard every single night. 
you know. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, some people deal with things a certain way, and Ozzy, it was just a matter of, uh, you know, the balance of, of letting him, you know, grieve in his own way, but also being able to keep him from, you know, going up the deep end, you know. Well, I want you to talk about this because, boy, it really paints a picture. You're the only person who played with Randy in Quiet Riot and Ozzy. You know the guy. Yeah. You're as close as it can be. Share yeah. the story, what it was like playing with him, uh, the final days, unusual things that you noticed, stuff off the uh, great book, off the rails. Well, it's not that I noticed anything unusual because, of course, nobody you know, could, you know, foresee what was going to happen with the accident. True. But, uh, but, but I can tell you, you know, Randy, it's, it's, look, you're talking about a guy who, by the time he passed away, he was already on, on, on his way to the top. He was at the top, basically. Anybody that would come and see Randy would say, oh, man, this guy is, is like nobody else. He's unique. And they would become instant fans. I, don't know, I know this because people tell me when I meet him, is they, you know, they say, hey, I saw you at a certain show in 1981 or early 82 with a diary and Randy, and Randy changed my life, and I became the, that's when I decided to play guitar. You know, I mean, I, I get that all the time. Mm -hmm. But the fact remains that Randy, at the time he died, he, he was still living at home with his mom. He had never taken the money that he made, went out and bought a fancy car. No, he still was driving the same car that he was driving around when he was in Quiet Riot before he, he joined Ozzy. You know, and nothing changed him. All he wanted to do, the very few tour breaks that we had, that he actually got to go home, he just wanted to be, you know, hang out with his girlfriend, play with his little toy trains, you know, Z, Z scale uh, toy trains, mm -hmm. hang, you know, hang out with his mom, just like a very quiet existence. All right, Rudy, let's take a little break as we celebrate a little sound bite from Quiet Riot, one of your bands. You are listening to the Alan Handelman Show. Rock Talk Radio.